Most people in America are familiar with when someone enters their home. Most people in America are familiar with where they place things when they're not busy. Most people in America are quite familiar with all sorts of incontinence. It is not true, but most people in America do know what to do when they're being mouthed off at by an employee of a publicly traded company. The publicly traded company is called Dollar Tree. Generally speaking, I'm quite valuable to them in that I am a regular customer. They are more like a grocery store to me, and I utilize them every day. But this morning, I'm waking up and discovering that my beard is once again cut. And within a couple minutes after that, as typical, their employee Michael, who has had a struggle with some vanity and some, well, vice, is walking by me, yelling at me, don't do it. I don't even know this man, more than a few interactions with him. And then he's starting to threaten me, saying, don't do it or you're going to go to jail. And I'm like, what are we talking about? I told him to leave me alone, like any villain would, right? I mean, a villain is one that says, don't leave me alone. Whereas the antagonist in the film scene, the one who threatens and calls and then pretends like he's going to have fisticuffs with you and openly walks at you. This is an employee of your fucking company. And your company thinks that its employees in its off moments, its two seconds before work, has the right to politically correct behavior. Does it not? And I gave fair warning to the owner or the manager of the shop named Lisa that they might have a challenge with that one. This is a man who lives with his mom, who's in his, I don't know, 40s maybe, late 30s, and he's coming at me as a different person than normal and threatening me, threatening to call police, threatening all this shit. I'm like, what for? I just said, leave me the fuck alone. A man is going to repeat that over and over again when he's being harassed. He's no fucking different than the derelict on the street that was sitting at the corner at Baytown and Prospect. I do not know these people. And I have rights as a human person. I have rights as a consumer advocate. I have rights as a consumer in a shop not to be harassed by your employee. I don't need to be harassed by your manager, Tammy. I don't need to be insulted by your manager, Charlene. But you allow this because you're desperate for employees? I'm pretty sure you put some corporate people into your shop. But if your divisional manager or if your boss is allowing you that kind of behavior with somebody walking down the street in their white feeder shirt before they put their t-shirt on? Well, maybe he got caught. Because my impression of him is that his behavior and his acting is over the top. And he's trying to make a difference in what? In molesting me? In harming me? and allowing his two girlfriends there to interfere with me? I set myself together pretty straightforward in my little bitty space. And last night was cold. But I am not inviting one of these women who work for Dollar Tree or any of these people who are already on duty really early at the Staples Shore to be anywhere near me at night. And in the few hours that I get to sleep, I expect to be left alone by your employees. And when I wake up in the morning to stretch myself and I see a predator coming at me and I simply pull out a staff from Mike's tarp, I don't expect that man to start mouthing off of don't do it, don't do it. Does that mean he's been sitting around the corner listening to me? Or he's some player for the police who's either checking out the Dollar Tree or trying to fucking check me? But I have the right to my face. I have the right to my fashion. I have the right to my purchases. And I don't need some motherfucking old bitch dyke lesbian who's running your shop early in the morning, way early in the morning to stock your fucking shelves, pissing all over me with her new playboy, toy boy that works for your company. In America, we have rights, and the behavior of your employees on the job are just as important as your behavior of employees walking to their job. So I'm not sure what you have to do in your training handbook to get these people not to do this, but openly, I'm not going to tolerate that kind of behavior. I let him know I already talked to the corporate office on him. He may or may not like that, but as a consumer rights advocate, we have a right to know who these players are and what they fucking think they have the right to do on behalf of your publicly traded company. And this moment of time, I'm just waking up. I'm just putting myself together. I don't need some derelict in the community coming harassing me and dancing around like he's some sort of Popeye playing I ought to hit you and telling me to shut up. He's the one who started accosting me. 
wasn't the typical good morning. It was totally inappropriate behavior. So is he coming to the job all full of alcohol or drugs or something else? Full of me because somebody in his shop put their hands in my bags and started listening to me? Or somebody in the staple shop started mouthing off and talking to them about me? Gossip in America harms lives. And they have no fucking right to listen to me online. I have never given one employee on this strip anything about me in that way. I've only provided to your major manager, allegedly named Lisa, that I'm not one of these typical panhandling people that they have sitting and plastered outside their fucking shop. That I used to make a real living. I used to do real things. But I've never given that person any information about my online profile or my online BlazeCom TV, which is none of your fucking business.